August releasing part of the Krasenstein Bridges episode on the main channel, kind of the view count of the Bridges channel. It seems like the JJCon was doing well though. Um, yeah, well, I'll talk to him about it. I'm so curious how much of this is intentional. There are moments, there are funny moments in this podcast that are only possible uh, because of the Jordan moves a lot when he speaks, like that leaning forward and, and everything. This is this is very combative, right? He's leaning forward, and you have me talking back. This is nice to capture in a wide, and it gives you the sense of that as well, right? Him like coming forward and everything. It wasn't a bloody vaccine. What is it? A hundred percent success rate? You think it's a definition of vaccine? I saw this. Um, Do you know any Starcraft streamers like Destiny and like Husky Starcraft? You calling Destiny a Starcraft streamer? I watched him like way back in the days. There was like when he was playing like StarCraft Winds of Liberty. There's like four faster history and all stuff, but super, super old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know Destiny. I met him at uh, TwitchCon Vegas and we talked for a little bit. And he's like, I feel like I know you. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm Tekton from OTK. And then he's like, oh, there it is. He laughs and he walks away. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> yeah, Destiny Destiny does not like OTK. Oh shit. Is are they like in competing companies or like what's up? Not I feel like people always take the weirdest reads. I feel like I saw this guy. I don't even looking at him now, I'm not sure what I feel like I recognized him. Like I thought he would look like a guy who knew from Stargirl or something, like rough or something. And then I was like, wait, do I know you? Who are you? And then he says his name. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. And I was like, oh, I must recognize you from stream because yeah, because he's a streamer. But I don't hate OTK. I don't hate this guy. I don't. <laughs> oh, that's... What the fuck? And then he's like, oh, there it is. He laughs and he walks away. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. A little bit. And he's like, I feel like I know you. Also, when I hate that when these people, why'd you walk away? Um, you come off as aloof? No, I don't. Okay. What people always leave out when we're meeting each other here is where, did you leave right after? This is what I mean. They make it sound like everybody's in a room and we're all kind of like looking, socializing. And then I NPC bump into this guy, say, who are you? Oh, okay. Oh, and then I like leave for the door. What's probably happening is it's a convention and we're all like walking places or we're like crossing groups of people. And he's like, oh, hey, what's up? He's like, oh, hey, wait a second. Do I, um, I feel like you're familiar. He's like, oh yeah. I'm listening. I was like, oh, from OTK. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And then, and then you just kind of like keep moving on. Like everybody's like moving and walking places. We're not like sitting here sometimes, like all chatting with each other. And then I'm like, OTK, and then I like leave, you know? It's just so, nobody, everybody always leaves out the context for how these meetings happen. I didn't run, I didn't run, I didn't run, I didn't run, I didn't run. I feel like it was a joke and that you're reading too much into it. <clears throat> Wait, that what was a joke? Well, no, these guys genuinely think I don't like OTK. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm Tekton from OTK. And then he's like, oh, there it is. He laughs and he walks away. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, Destiny Destiny does not like OTK. Oh shit. Is are they like in competing companies or like what's up? No, I don't I don't know the story. I don't I don't really know the story. I mean it probably has something to do with Miskiff. I have no fucking idea. But uh yeah. Damn. It is what it is. Being an OTK is cool, but it also severs a lot of connections for you at the same time. It's unlucky. Okay. But it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Is that all these Oh, just don't. <clears throat> Why would you think Tiny doesn't like OTK? I don't know. Maybe that was the impression you got when we chatted, but. Are you doing shows tomorrow? Um, Yeah, tomorrow. He says he loves your content and he's not mad at you. Yeah, I don't think he is. He doesn't sound like he's mad at me. I just, But I don't have any problems with OTK. I don't have any problems with Tectone. Tectone? Tectone 1? Uh, tomorrow morning I do a Fox News podcast thing. It's not like the, the Fox News proper, but it's something Fox News hosts or whatever. Um, then I'm doing Ryan Long's podcast, and then I'm doing... Um, that above the table with a uh, gnome. Uh, those three shows are tomorrow in New York. If um, if Ak responds, I'll try to do something with him, but I don't know if he'll respond in time. I wish um, I would fly out tomorrow morning instead of tonight, but I'm so paranoid. I feel like I'm lying. It feels like I'm lying. Because you guys gaslight me. Oh, even Pisco didn't believe me when I said that flight got actually canceled. I don't think I've ever had, I don't know if I've ever had a flight fully get canceled before. Like a full on, fuck you, this shit is canceled and we don't even give you your money back like that. I don't think I've ever had that happen in my life. And now I'm super ultra paranoid it's gonna happen again. I don't think it will though. I should just fly out in the morning. I should fly out in the morning. 
Why am I not flying out in the morning? Flight to New York. It was raining in New York City. It was raining. So? Did they really not refund you? No, they put they gave you a credit for another flight, but apparently if it's not your if it's not um if it's not the airline's fault, they don't have I've just never known. I didn't I've never had that happen to me before. I've done hundreds and hundreds of flights. I've never had that happen before in my life. Destiny, if people keep away, keep away, you mean keep coming away with these impressions, at what point are you like, oh shit, okay, maybe I need such want to change my behavior? Uh, for me, no, no. I, the overwhelming majority of people that meet me in real life say I'm an incredibly friendly person. It's just every now and then there's just like a dumb, weird interaction. It's not even dumb or weird. This isn't like a big deal or anything. <laughs> I, just, I got bumped once voluntarily because they overbooked. I got a nice hotel voucher and $800 uh, flown out the next day. Um, yeah, I used to do that, but my time is. How do you feel about XCC hanging out with Aiden Ross? Do you think the bridge will burn between me and Felix? No shot. I don't care who he hangs out with. And I feel like he's not the kind of person who would not like somebody because a friend told him, but I could do right. I don't know. <sighs> I want to fly out tomorrow because I haven't, I haven't gotten to shoot my alien yet. I want to go to the range. No, I'm not going to be able to do it for like two days. August releasing part of the Krasenstein Bridges episode on the main channel kind of f the view count of the Bridges channel. It seems like the JJCon was doing well though. Um, yeah, I haven't looked at any of that. He's so positive. Um, I, I'm so jealous of that. I need to do a much better job of that. It's something I want to focus more on. Um, constructive instead of destructive. Wait, this isn't even, what do you mean the, wait, this isn't even posted yet. How are you comparing the, the views? F U.S. history pre 20th century. I would recommend America at the turn of 20th century when the U.S. goes from looking inwards and isolation is becoming an imperialist nation with the Spanish-American War taking over the Philippines. I think, no, I think it's good. I think I just need, it's just so much information. It's so much information. It's so much information. And there's just stuff that I'm like tangentially aware of, but I just don't have very many details about. And it would just be good to know it. Like it's such a, it's a killer talking point. It's very interesting that people come to the United States and they're like, I got mine, fuck you. And I wonder sometimes if it's the immigrants that do that more than anybody else. Um, I'm reminded one of my own family that, I don't know if this is true of all Cubans, but man, Stevie, Mexicans need to stay in their country and fix it. It's not right that they come to this country illegally. They can't just come here and cross the border, Stevie. Like, we don't know who's coming into this place, and they, they should stay and fix their own place, and it's not right, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, Mom, tell me the story again about how Uncle Ruben, you know, swam the last half of whatever, getting the United States or whatever. Like, you think that's okay, right? That's different, Stevie. They were fleeing communism, and it was an evil oppression. Fidel Castro was killing all sorts of people. It's a horrible place, Stevie. You don't understand the difference. Like, okay, Mom, all right, okay. And then listening to... um. Now I'm curious too, when you have like Italians or Italian Americans and stuff saying things like, well, my family came here legally. And it's like, okay, wait, came here legally how? Like came here legally like through Ellis Island where basically every single person was allowed to just come in, stamp a document and go through with basically no checks whatsoever. Like you're basically coming in with, with no background, anything, right? Um, I didn't, I wasn't aware of like how open the Ellis Island, like immigration process was and how many people came through there. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. That's such an unbelievable, like, this is a good talking point to have for a debate. Like how you've gotten into the country. I think they were letting people into Ellis Island without any, without any paperwork whatsoever. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus. August said he's trying to funnel viewers to the bridges. YouTube channel is going to make an account. Short term issue is cocking bridges. Um, yeah, I'll talk to him about it because right now that just doesn't make any sense. What doesn't make sense is, so like if he wants to funnel viewers, that's fine. Wait, where is he? Is he listening? You can't post the clip here though and then not have the main video up on this channel. There's no, there's no follow through. Cause like, oh, I see there's a 50 minute cut. It seems. Is, it, is there even a link to full, oh, full video. Oh. It's there for members. 
Well, sure, but even if it's there for members, I don't think they should be posted on the main channel until the video is public. It just doesn't make any sense, I think. I don't care. Um, I'm rich. I don't need the members. I don't know why. I understand like privating things and then making that members only because you're like working on the bot or whatever. And then that's fine. If people want to be a member and they want a little bonus, that's fine. Who cares? But um, the viewership and exposure needs to be the absolute number one maximized thing over all else. Like paywalling anything or doing a detriment to viewership at all is bad. Privating something and making that viewership viewer, uh, uh, privating something and making that members only after the live stream goes live, that's good. It's good because obviously you get money for memberships, but it's also good because you don't want all the views going to like a live stream. You want the views going to the cut video after. So it's good for viewership and it can make money if you want. Yeah. But um, yeah, but this, if the clip goes live on the channel, Are you going to do super chats on bridges? Um, I don't think so. I just, maybe for Dan with, with anything else, I just want this to be very formal. I don't know, I'm not, not like very formal, but I, I don't want it to be um, like, like, like you're interacting with chat. Debates. Or maybe, maybe it just depends on the person. Um, I could have talked, I could have talked with this guy for six or seven hours. Uh, I just, I really like his perspective. He's like very interested in me. And, he, and, he's, and he's well thought out. Like he has reasons for why he does things and he can articulate them well. And he's like fun and interesting to talk to. Um, so, was, so, was, um, so was Ryan Macbeth. And the Krasenstein brothers were too, actually. The first guy was as well. I'm, I'm cucking Jeremy, Jeremy a little bit. He, he was as well. They're just the topic matter, the subject matter just wasn't as um, interesting, I think. But yeah, I could have I spoken with this guy for, yeah, for easily for like two or three more hours. There are like a ton of other big things that I could have brought up even. I am so fucking sunburned. Holy shit. I feel like now, actually, hopefully this doesn't date the podcast too much when I say it, but it's like, you know, like now there's this whole conversation about like the abortion thing, right? And like Trump gave that speech the other day where he sort of. I have no, I have no. I have no t uh, taste or style for set design. I need to figure out something for the back here. The camera, <laughs> the shots are good. The lenses are good, I think. Like there's a good amount of blur. So whatever our f-stop is, it's fine. The lighting is super dead. I don't know what to do with that. Like it's, a, or at least it feels that way. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's just so much lighting from back here. One thing that I'm thinking about is I don't know. Um, I want to try this for an episode. I give this as an example. I don't know if there's anything gained in these wide shots. Cool things. I want to try having a fourth shot that's like and a um, and I just that's just a synthetic shot made between both of these, where you crop the um, sides on both, and it's just if there's like a really active back and forth, rather than cutting to the wide, it's just like one on the left, one on the right. Because I feel like um, make arguments about Canadian. I I think you do get you get so much more out of Never I I, I want to see his face when he's talking. And I think I want to see the passage. I need to read like I want to see my face when I'm talking because I need to make sure I notice what's going on. And then like like I think there's a lot like, okay, here. That's what it was. Yes. But then I went under the Twitter, and a whole bunch of people were thinking like, "Oh, now you can have sex with ten year olds in Arizona." Yeah. Yes. So the illiteracy of the Twitter. I don't know if I'm gaining much on this. Am I? Or Twitter. Yeah. And the illiteracy. Like, would this be better, or would a synthetic shot with these two um, cut as one frame look better? I need, a, I need to see an example of this. Well, I'll probably try it for an episode. I might not like it. I don't know. We'll see. How did you keep a straight face when he said a boot? Um, I usually have a quick conversation beforehand. Um, I have a quick conversation beforehand about what they want to talk about, what they don't. And he said, he's just like, it's just really boring having like the 30 minutes over your thing, how you say words and where your accent comes from. And... I was like, okay, yeah. So I just left it alone completely. I hate how yellowish slash orange and sickly you look in this setup compared to the podcast setup. Wait, you mean in mine right now? Um, stay mad. It might be just because there's so much light in the background. 
I thought about moving my computer desk and everything into Melina's old room and then setting it up with the sunlight coming in from the front, but then I lose all my depth of background and it would look incredibly boring. But maybe I could work with it. I don't know. That's all, that would be a whole bunch of work. I don't know. I could also just, it might just be like a white balance on my camera thing right now, so. I think the set is fine. All you need are some colors, maybe adding colorful lights in your room could make the set more dynamic. I think adding a few colors for like anything else maybe it would look a little bit nice, but I, I feel like colored LED lamps are for people with no taste. Col colorful lamps are for when you don't have any idea of like an aesthetic. That's why like my background is like just, it's like depth plus like lamps. But there's not like a real aesthetic. I don't think you've ever seen a set before in your life where you're like, God, that set is so nice because of all the LED lamps. Um, I think LED lamps, from an aesthetic point of view, can be really nice when they're using when they're used to accent things. But as a substitution for uh, aesthetic or taste, I don't think it works very well. Um, yeah, but I don't even know what I would go with. The gold picture frame and wall color is tacky behind you. Oh wait, on the on this set. of the yeah the audience so fuck there's so, we're so close to having so much amazing stuff back here too but i just don't think no, i also don't think it comes across well on the wide this the view out of this window is amazing but i just don't know if we can ever fully capture that plus the both guests at the same time or or, or both speakers me and the other person That. I, guess we'll I also think, um, cause I've gone back and forth, obviously I have, and, uh, Kyla has, and obviously my audience has strong opinions. I'm like, well, what is Kyla's place on a show like this? Is it better for you to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation? I think that one thing that I think is missing sometimes from these conversations that can help is I think Kyla, Kyla is really good at giving me a question. Um, if the other person doesn't ask anything so that it kind of like moves the conversations so both of us are talking, um, uh, but both of us are speaking and also, uh, Kyla is a really good grounding mechanism on these podcasts too. Uh, it's kind of, it's a little bit annoying sometimes because it's good if Kyla comes in without all of the necessary information, but I think it's hard to do that because if Kyla asks a question where the audience is like, wow, we know that and Destiny knows that, like she's so f***ing stupid. Um, to, to like maybe my hardcore audience, that seems like a good thing, but I think if people are watching from the outside, sometimes it's nice to have somebody to just like ask like, well, hold on, wait, you said made in Canada, like what's that? Or what does that have to do with it? Like, what are your guys' um, thoughts on on this thing? See, when where just having somebody like that to ground out the show, I think for people that are coming in and watching that haven't seen everything on my stream or all that, I think is good. I think it's a good thing. Um, uh, the problem right now is that the audience is your audience. They wanna hear you talk, new viewers will change that. Well, new people wanna hear me talk too, excuse me. Don't you have high refresh rates on your monitors? How did you get rid of the reflection flickering back to the webcam? Wait, what reflection flickering? What are you talking about? Have you seen the background of Chris Williams' podcast with Dr. K? Yeah, I don't know if I like the big green screen thing as much. Um, it feels like a lot. <laughs> I really like the set that I had with him um, when we were in that, uh, that huge apartment space though. Anything else seems to have a problem with being unapproachable for an outside audience? Maybe, I mean, damn bro, it's like three episodes deep, okay, chill. <laughs> God damn. There does need to be, um, yeah, grounding forces are important. I wonder sometimes for H3H3, I don't listen to a lot of podcasts too, so it's hard for me, um, It's hard for me to even know what people want. I, I feel like the production people are kind of important. Maybe. I feel like they add a lot. When Ethan is doing his show and he's getting asked questions by, is it Dan? They're Dan or whatever? Like, I feel like that's a, I feel like that helps a ton. I'm not sure. Yeah. But I don't watch his main show that much. Alexa set up, but darker. I like it. face to face with the man yeah i like this like mahogany black look there was a controversy a year ago 
He's also got nice things that he collects too. Like this is cute. The shelf and everything in the background. Where a woman came forward and said that you were pushy with her. You respected the no. You got the consent, but you were pushy about it. Mm. I'm so curious how much of this is intentional or if he just, I like the angles and everything too. Like he's got the bookshelves that have these lines going this way. The table is like very nicely cut here. Like Looking on this back, shot. Can you tell the story um, of that? What are the lessons you learned from it? Yeah, I mean, like, like, and then on the opposite, on the reverse shot here, right? You've got the angles of the things here, and then you've got the table that cuts here in the corner. Yeah, this is super cute. We'll figure it out. We'll just keep keep working on it. I don't like a set. Well, f you. Yeah, I mean, you pay August for that shit, so no, not really for set design, no. Can you and Dan do an episode of your show where it's the left-leaning version of Fresh and Fit, whatever, you two and a bunch of trad wives? <laughs> yeah, I'll get right on that. You plan on getting mic arms? We have mic arms, I'm just waiting for, it's lichen strawberry right now to figure out how to fit them into the table. Your set looks a little cramped, if anything. There's not enough space between the table and the background. Um, I think that's all illusory. I think it just, that comes down to a feeling because like this set is super cramped. If this is his place in Austin, there's not much space here at all between the background and the subject. Like it's, it's, it feels cramped too. It's a small room. He just does a really good job with the space. If this is his set in Austin. Consciousness is the big objection to materialism. It's the thing that screams out that there's some shape. But it does seem to me that- Wait, what? Consciousness is is the big consciousness is the big objection hey, to buddy. materialism it's the thing that screams out that there's something more than the mere material even just when you have an average dream it's fascinating to think what's going on there you've got images in your head you can close your eyes and you can picture things you can see colors you can see shape excuse me did he rip this from me F you or maybe this is a common thing love the new lights on stream by the way space looks great at night too reminds me of the old early place just hate your cable management um i ordered something else yesterday actually that will hopefully help with that ah <sighs> oh, god wolfgang what's up buddy i was ordering stuff last night to organize cables in my place here's what i or here's what i ordered hopefully this thing <laughs> oh me too me too i'm getting into cable management because i live in a rat's nest with all these wires for all the little tools that i have for everything this will help me route like the so i don't have these like dangling fucking cables off my bookshelf and shit um but i was watching i was i was ordering this while watching um oh it was when god damn it it was when tywin told Tyrion and uh, Cersei about their new marriages. God, that's such a good fucking scene. Fuck. <laughs> and you're looking at the fucking... Oh, it's such a good scene. <laughs> Children. Oh, my God. Cersei thinks that Tyrion is getting fucked so hard and she's there to gloat over it. Oh, my God. I am not mm -mm -mm. to be bred like a... Oh, I am Queen Regent. Fuck. Sorry. You know, the more you ruminate on how good it was, the just sadder you're going to get. If I were you, I'd try to get rid of it like a dangerous ex from your life. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm telling you? <laughs> uh, can't wait for Dustin to realize none of his cables will be long enough to use something like that. Um, you are right. And that would be a shame if that arrived and I didn't realize that, but I also ordered uh, 12 extension cables too, so nice. Oh, he's extended, boys. You guys are fucked. Why would you guys even tell him that? Thinking he's not prepared. Uh, I had some questions about the show that I find really interesting and what you're mentioning like about colored lights and aesthetics. I am super curious about that. Um, where do you feel like you... Oh, God, my birds woke up. This is not good. Um, oh, ben, where, do like you wanna, where do you feel like you want to put the finger down as the director that's like, I want to be directly involved with this instead of hiring somebody to like manage the set or something like that? Like, how do you feel about... Where do you want to put your finger as the director of the show? I don't know. I just like... I don't know. I like, I still enjoy learning everything. Like, it's just fun for me. I like to be able to set up stuff and know what's going on and understand like everything behind the thing, but I probably need to get rid of that a little bit. But I feel like when it comes to things like, um, like aesthetic or taste for design, it's something I've just, I've never, ever, ever had an eye for any of that. Whether it's like fashion, like personally, um, whether it's like set design, whether it's anything having to do with like drawing or art, I just don't have, I think like that gene is completely and utterly removed from myself. So I feel like it's something I need to like spend a little bit of time intentionally 
Yes. Putting, yeah, effort into yes. him. Yes. Here's, uh, Fuck. Every time that I talk to you, I'm in like a rush to do something, but my birds are yelling, so I might have to leave soon. Here's what I want to recommend to you. Uh, you want to look for a software called PureRef. It is basically just a very well done, very concise, easy to make uh, Instagram like mood board. If you want to cultivate like things wow. that you like, instead of Arcade keeping Bishop, in your mind, like, oh, I remember the set from X, and then you search it, and then you go on Google, you can just have a board for where you keep all the aesthetics that you like from like shows. Just print screen right on it, and then you have like a compilation. You can organize it by different sets that you like and whatnot. Just look that up. Take a look and see if you like it. I'll come bother you later, maybe. I don't know. I gotta fucking feed him and shit. Well, Love be you. Careful. Mm -hmm. 750,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much. Especially over the past year, the channel has been growing and really showing me that there's a lot more room to maneuver in this year. 150,000. When people do these types of shots, like these punch-ins, what's the point? And subscribers. Thank you all so much. Especially over the past year, the channel has been growing and really what is the me reason that there's for a lot this? more. Seven hundred and are you getting something from this? Subscribers. Thank you all so much. I guess it, I guess it emphasizes the point. Here's this. Seven hundred and fifty thousand subscribers. Thank you all so much. Especially. Is it not a cut? I don't think it is a cut. Actually, I think it's. I think it's one shot. I think. He, I don't think he's cutting at all because you can see his eyes switch. Um, they start to close before they go to the next, like the punch in. I think. I don't think. It's, I don't think it's hiding a cut at all. Could be wrong. Seven hundred and fifty thousand subscribers. Thank you all. So you see his eyebrows raised before and after. I don't think it's a cut. I um. Isaac, too big. Thanks for the five gifted memberships, buddy. It's supposed to increase the intensity of the shot. Yeah, that's what I feel like. It's like a. It's like kind of like a highlight on what you're saying. Past year, it's the podcast about thought uh, a few years ago I had some of the big ones with you so hopefully we can keep it going and eventually since second to pay the only height sort of end email i felt like it would be wrong of me to be publicly advocating i also have one of the things about my background too is i have too many lights um i think shadows are really cool they do look nice I don't know if I necessarily like this set a lot, but I like like this shadow. This stuff is interesting here. Um, remember, for color, when it comes to lights, color is um, is it? Do you call it additive? If you throw lots and lots and lots of light and more and more and more light on things, you kill everything and everything becomes washed out. There's no shadows anywhere, and everything becomes white and boring, as opposed to black and ethnic and BIPOC and awesome. <sighs> Your sunset background is so unique that has to stay. You mean in the podcast? Hey, I'm I'm confident in it. Yeah, I would I would love to hear your your reasons why not. Yeah, well, I found I found the the thread. I had to sort of go into the depths of Reddit to find a copy. Where's my camera guy? What? Oh, I don't know if he's even awake right now. Uh -huh. Somewhere that someone had said. One of the things that I read, I had to. Would love to hear your your reasons why not. Yeah, well, I found I found the the thread. I had to sort of go into the depths of Reddit to find a copy uh -huh. somewhere that someone had saved. One of the things that I I suppose admire about the moral landscape is that a great deal of the new atheist movement has been criticised. And people talk about new atheism in past tense these days. Do you want a nice looking fake set that you don't care about, or a real personal set you can feel proud of? Well, I don't care. Either. I just wanted to. I need an aesthetic that represents something that I that matters or is relevant, I guess. I'm not I sure. Mm. Like I thought about before, like what looks cool. I like like steampunk stuff. I think could look cool, like a Bioshocky type of thing. Like I think that stuff looks cool, but it doesn't really synergize with any of the themes or whatever I'm going for on the show either. And it doesn't really communicate anything that makes sense. You agree with that assessment, but I like, I like Sam's shot here more than I like Alex's shot. Um, I don't know why. I have no idea why. Maybe because the brick wall here is just cool. And then he's almost like an artificial divider here between this and like what's going on over here, the little shelf and everything. Maybe it's just the white wall I don't like as much. I'm not sure. I feel like wide shots like this are only good it's just a feeling I have. I feel like wide shots like this are only good when both people are very animated. So for instance, I think for anything else, um, 
when me and Dan are doing stuff, I think wides work well. I was cool. Because we're both like jumping and shouting at each other, or can be. Into him once, and I was like, hey, listen, you know, do whatever you want to do. Leave me out of your shit. I don't want to be involved with your crazy fing Nazis. want to do. I've only found out more about me, and they're like, yo, this is not okay. Yeah. Another thing I don't like, um, I'm donating more to like Somalia's GDP. Like, I bet there was a no. I really, really, really don't like the look Jeez, of eyes out on screens when two people are talking to each other, which is another thing. When I'm talking, or I'm sorry, when Dan starts talking, I think I'm safe to look at my, think he's gonna my monitor here. Um, I mean, I guess we'll see. And Biden is about the same as he was four years ago. Where people Even if I'm paying attention, not looking at the person communicates such an unfathomable level of disinterest. This is why I always tell you guys, like, if you're going on, like, especially first dates, but really almost any date, unless you're really, really comfortable with a per person, it can either be a partner or somebody you've explicitly talked to about this. Um, the worst thing you can ever, 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 ever do on a first date. Oh, my fucking God. Do not ever, ever pick up your phone. Holy shit. Dude, it, if you're going to, it literally needs to be like, oh my God, I just got a text saying that my mom is dying, okay? Also, if you do have to pick it up and there's something important, um, say like, you should tell the person like, hold on one second, I need to like answer a text thing really quick. Um, it is so much better. It feels more rude and it feels more intrusive, but telling somebody like, hold on one second, let me, I need to respond to this really quickly and then putting it down and saying, okay, can you continue? Doing that is so much better psychologically because when you're trying to sneak something while the person is talking, the thing that you're communicating is like, I'm not even really listening to you, so let's do this. And then, oh, like, I'm kind of back. As opposed to like, hold on, wait, like, stop for a second. I care about what you have to say. That's what you're coming Like, I actually care about what you're saying. I care about the story right now. Um, hold on a second. And then you do your text and then you're like, okay, go ahead and continue. Yeah. God, that's such a horrible. Yeah. I My eyes are on screen so much, though. Um, hey. hey, what's up? Real quick, because I got a show soon. I got other stuff I'm trying to cover before the show. What's well, going on? yeah, I'm uh, going to be on the Kicker Keep show. I was wondering what the topics are. I have no clue. But I wouldn't release them to you ahead of time. I would be cheating. Okay. I was just wondering. Okay. Love you. Be All right, we'll see you soon. Bye. Same for looking at a smartwatch. Super distracting and disrespectful to look at. Yeah, sure. Anything like that. Do you record the video of the podcast separately from the stream and upload that so it's higher quality? Nah, I haven't cared much about that yet. We can do that in the future, buying external drives to record. I don't think that matters that much, though. The night, day, night, day edit on anything else is pretty bad, too. I don't understand why... Um, I don't know why August... I would have to... Do I have to watch the full thing? Is there, like, some stuff that's so important to cut to like shuffle around that it like does that need to be cut that way i almost fell out of my chair how bad it was and insulting to both me and you okay we are did we already do tucker carlson winning over the gray zone no nope, because you don't know what either of those things things over a career or did you see the earth and like, do, we need, can't do, do we have to shuffle these segments around i don't know it seems kind of weird i don't know why he does that Also, because I feel like the energy and everything is going to naturally like rise and fall, like ebb and flow during um, during a show as well. So it seems weird to like cut these in the middle, and yeah, I'm not sure. Why are you so far to the left in the wide shots? Dan takes up too much space. Well, because he's the hunchback of bulletproof vest to Dom over here. I think the challenge is trying to capture the left and right guests while still keeping some of the background intact. But yeah, I don't know. I just don't know how I feel about this at all. I'm not sure. Some of that works in cinematography for station, set, builds, told me wide shots in talk shows or podcasts are mainly for changing slash establishing a topic and entering a new focal point and establishing a story. I don't know what you Yeah, I can kind of see that. But I, I do think that when both sides are energized at the same time talking to each other, I think that, I think there's value in having a wide shot. But it has to be like, like for me and JJ, I don't know if it makes much sense for me and Ryan, basically anything on bridges, I don't know if the wide shot ever makes sense, unless we're both watching something on a screen. But like, um, 
uh, I talk, I, I talk a lot like this. Like I can be pretty animated when I speak and that animation conveys a lot of interest or passion. Like it's good for the viewer to see that. And sometimes if I'm talking to somebody else and they do it too, I think that having both of those on screen is, uh, is, is nice. Um, Hello everyone. Like there are moments, there are funny moments in this podcast that are only possible, uh, because of the wide shot. Where is the um, afterward COVID par par Sounds pandemic really high to me? 20. Fuck. Where is the where's the where's the this much this much like that was only possible because they have um, because they have a wide shot here. Um, damn, three million views. Holy shit. OK. What do I need to get you to try wearing some comfortable technical pants one time? <laughs> What you, what you need to do is you have to kill my brain's desire for bright Crayola crayon colors, okay? 126.50. Oh, Jordan Peterson also, another nice thing to catch, but it's also different here because we don't have a table in front of us, so we've got more space to move as well. And Jordan moves a lot when he speaks, like that leaning forward and, and everything. the consequence of that um, was it that communicates a lot. It's, that's nice. Of people um, with an experimental, and it wasn't a bloody... It's well, not because it didn't have a hundred percent success rate. You think it's a definite like this shot? Like this isn't this is very combative, right? He's leaning forward, and you have me talking back. This is nice to capture in a wide, and it gives you the sense of that as well, right? Him like coming forward and everything. It wasn't a bloody vaccine. It's well, because it didn't have a hundred percent success rate. You think it's a definition of vaccine? The whole point of the vaccine is to give your body a protein it's to not, train on. I don't like the. I don't know why the. Uh, moving back and forth shit, I think it's They used the word of... vaccine so that they didn't have to contend with the fact that it wasn't the mRNA technology. There are different types of vaccines there certainly that are, 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 that are different technologies. Fine. The mRNA vaccines is a type this of vaccine used to be technology. Vaccines. Now this is vaccine. No, it was like this and now it's like this. No, no, no. It was like this and now it's like this. The MNR, mRNA technology was a radical qualitative leap are you wearing a mic on your shirt? Yeah, I think they have shirt mics and I think they have boom mics. I think they're using both for this. This, not having a table at all here is nice. Do we need a table? Why do we have a table? We would need couches otherwise. Tables are nice. It's a little bit more professional. No, it's okay. But. Why does best when you um, don't want to or I'm sorry, why does best when back and forth is too rapid for cuts? You don't want to distort the audience with rapid cuts. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't know, we will figure it out. Some of the podcasts don't have the name of the title, why? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, that's another thing I'd probably talk to August about. I feel like August fixates a little bit too much on titling, but I, I kind of just defer to him on everything. But I feel like on some things, there are some things where I feel like, does this really make a big difference on video views? Um, there were a couple of these. Like on this, I have no idea that this is me and Dan's show. Like I can't tell at a glance from the thumbnail and I definitely can't tell from the title. Like, does it actually destroy the SEO to write like anything else episode three? Would that, dis would that murder the SEO? Or, or the discovery having that in the title. I just, I feel like there's no shot it would, but I don't know. Read the thumbnail. I know it's in the thumbnail, but that's not immediately obvious. I don't even know what this is. Anything else number zero three. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's communicated. YouTube loves randomly killing channels. I don't know if that happens. I don't know if I agree with that. Anything else is such a community focused meme. Does it even matter? Um, I mean, it's got the opportunity. It could branch out into other stuff. It just depends on, um, it depends on the topics and everything. I bring your shot a little lower so the viewer feels more like they're sitting in the room. Right now the wide shot is more from a standing angle. Yeah, but that's because it's to capture anything nice on that window outside. The problem is that if we, um, youtube.com bridges. The problem is if that camera comes down anymore, that whole background is just... Do you think most people that think that the yellow... But you don't even get anything nice with the background because it's so fucking washed out. I wonder if you could put like a... Are they called ND filters? What are the polarized filters that only let light in from a certain angle? I wonder if you could throw a huge one of these or would that be like a million dollars over this? It's such a... 
it's just the reason why I like the window and everything outside is because one, it's unique. Not every set has like a super nice outside source of light, super nice viewpoint outside like that. One is that it's unique. Um, and then the second thing is that it does look super nice back here. I just don't think it's communicated well with the camera. I don't know. I don't know. Can you make bridges separate or at least different from normal videos? Well, it is. I mean, it's on a separate, a whole ass separate channel. You mean like when it's on my channel? I don't know. I don't know. What's your opinion on a DJ chat on the podcast? I just, having a live chat on any podcast, I don't know. Does anybody at all do that? I also don't think, um, um, I don't know. It's all, it's still figuring things out. I don't know if like ever, I don't know if there's any value in looking at or responding to chat ever. Like if chat says something that's worth responding to, it coming from production sounds a million times better than like looking at a screen and responding to a chatter, I think. DGG chat might look good if it were on an actual physical screen somewhere in the frame. That would actually be really cute. Oh my God. That's a good idea. Actually, hold on, I'm writing that down. That's a good idea even just for a uh, set here. Having like, um, having like a 32 inch monitor uh, somehow hung up on the wall or like behind Dan or me or something like right here at an angle even that just has DGG chat like scrolling <laughs> would look, um, it just, that'd be a really cute thing to add or any chat scrolling, yeah. You gotta choose between prioritizing live viewers versus video watchers. Um, I think for both the goal is to, the goal is prioritizing video watching over live viewing. It might seem like you guys are a bit more engaged with the viewers who respond to them rather than the production. We don't need to be engaged with the viewers. The goal isn't to have like a, it's not a live stream for like viewers. It's supposed to be a show where me and Dan are chatting about shit. That mess with advertisements or is that not a concern? Ads are gonna make more money on VODs, stuff like that anyway, versus live stuff. Don't stream bridges then, just premiere the VOD on YouTube. It's like a live stream. Why, what would be the point? Yeah, I don't think there's anything. You just you prioritize for video, but you can still live stream it. I don't think that takes away from anything. Yeah, that's actually what I thought of when somebody mentioned putting chat on a monitor was the um, all of Albert's sets. Albert is a really, really, really killer eye for uh, design. I think all of his sets and everything look really cute. But I like this this monitor here with chat on it or whatever. I think it's really nice. Actually, I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind paying him to come out and do a set design actually. Oh, that would actually be so cool cuz I like Albie. Albie, Albert. Oh no. Did he remove me or are we not friends? Oh wait, he's this. What is he even doing these days? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, I need to, 